The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Second chapter, text number 28. Given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Recorded on August 30th, 1973, in London, England. Translation. All created beings are unmanifest in their beginning, manifest in their interim state, and unmanifest again when they are annihilated. So what need is there for lamentation? So our soul is eternal. So there is nothing, no cause for lamentation, because soul will remain, even the body is destroyed. There is no cause of lamentation. And those who do not believe that there is no soul, everything was void in the beginning, so in the beginning there was void, and in the middle it is manifested, then again it is void. So void to void where there is lamentation. This is the argument Krishna is giving. Both ways you cannot lament. Uh, then? Uh, yet even if for argument's sake we accept the atheistic theory, there is still no cause for lamentation. Apart from the separate existence of the soul, the material elements remain unmanifested before creation. From this subtle state of unmanifestation comes manifestation, just as from ether, air is generated, from air, fire is generated, from fire, water is generated, and from water, earth becomes manifested. From the earth, many varieties of manifest... This is the process of creation. Uh, from ether, then sky, then air, then fire, then water, then earth. This is the process of creation. Yes. Uh, take, take for example a big skyscraper manifested from the earth. When it is dismantled, the manifestation becomes again unmanifested and remains as atoms in the ultimate stage. The law of conservation of energy remains, but in course of time, things are manifested and unmanifested. That is the difference. Then what cause is there for lamentation, either in the stage of manifestation or unmanifestation? Somehow or other, even in the unmanifested stage, things are not lost. Both at the beginning and at the end, all elements remain unmanifested, and only in the middle are they manifested, and this does not make any real material difference. And if we accept the Vedic conclusion as stated in the Bhagavad Gita, Antavanta ime deha, that these material bodies are perishable in due course of time, nityas yog tak naha, but that soul is eternal, then we must remember always that the body is like a dress. Therefore, why lament the changing of a dress? The material body has no factual existence in relation to the eternal soul. It is something like a dream. In a dream we may think of flying in the sky or sitting on a chariot as a king, but when we wake up we can see that we are neither in the sky nor seated on the chariot. The Vedic wisdom encourages self-realization on the basis of the non-existence of the material body. Therefore, in either case, whether one believes in the existence of the soul or one does not believe in the existence of the soul, there is no cause for lamentation for loss of the body. The one point in this connection is that at night, when I am dreaming, I forget this body. This body, uh, in dream, I am seeing that I have gone in a different place, talking with different men, and my position is different. But at that time I don't remember that actually my body is lying on the bed in the apartment where I have come. But you don't remember this body. It is everyone's experience. Similarly, uh, when you come again, uh, awakening stage in the morning after getting up from the bed, I forget all the bodies I created in my dream. Uh, so which one is correct? This is correct. This body is correct or that body is correct? Uh, because that night I forget this body, and at day time I forget the other dreaming body. So both of them are not correct. It is simply hallucination. But I am correct. 
Because I see at night, I see in the time. The arm eternal, the body is not eternal. This is the fact. Antavati me deha nitya sukta saririna. Saririna, the owner of the body is eternal, but not the body. In so many ways, Krishna is explaining about the material condition of this body. But those who are not very intelligent, with poor fund of knowledge, it is very difficult for them to understand. Otherwise, things are very clear. This point is very clear. That at night I forget this body. And in daytime I forget the body at night. This is a fact. Similarly, I may forget the body of my last appearance, last uh, duration of life, or I may not know the future body, but I will exist and uh, the body may change, but I will have to accept another body which is temporary. Uh, but I, as, as I exist, it means I have got a body, and that is spiritual body. The spiritual body is existing. And spiritual advancement means, first of all, to know spiritual identification of myself. That's why Sanatana Goswami went to uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu after retiring from his ministership. So he first of all said that Kyami kyano mare japi tapatra. Actually, I do not know what I am and why I am subjected to the miserable condition of life. Therefore, the miserable condition of life is this body, because I get in the dream also. Uh, when I get another body, sometimes we find that I am top of the very uh, tall uh, bamboo or tall uh, mountain and just now I'm falling down. Uh, and I'm afraid I sometimes cry that I'm not falling down. Uh, so uh, these bodies, this material body, which body I belong to, which I am, uh, actually I do not belong to any of this body. I've got a separate spiritual body. So this human life is meant for that realization, that I am not this material body, I am spiritual body, then next question will be, then what is my function? In the present uh, body, under some material condition, I am thinking this is my body and the body is produced under certain condition of this country or this family. Therefore, this is my family, this is my country, this is my nation, everything in bodily concept of life. And if I am not this body, then in relationship with this body, either my family or my country or my society or my other relationship, they are also false because the body is false. Therefore, Saṅkāra-cārya, Theorize this. Brahma Sattva Jagan Mithya. Brahma means the soul is actually the fact, not the uh, material manifestation. Material manifestation, of course, he says false. We don't say false, uh, we say temporary. Uh, so our main concern is that I am not temporary, my body is temporary. Now I am working for the body, that is illusion, aham mamet. Then what is real fact? Real fact is that I am spiritual particle and the whole spirit is Krishna or God. Therefore, the, as part and parcel of God, it is my duty to serve God. That is spiritual life, bhakti yoga. 
that is called sarupa. And in the other place, the Bhagavad Gita confirms it that sagunan samapitta yitan brahma bhuyāyata. One I realize that I am not this body, then immediately I transcend the three modes of material nature, satagun, rajagun, tamagun. Under the bodily concept of life, I am influenced by one of the modes of material nature and acting. Uh, uh, the Bhagavata also it is stated, Taya Sarvahita Jiva Atmanam Trivunatmatam Manute Anartham. Uh, so, because I have accepted this body, which is made of the either of the three modes of material nature and identified, therefore I have created so many anartham. Anartham means unwanted things. Uh, Tayacha abhipadyate. And after creating in bodily relationships so many unwanted things, I am absorbed in thought. That I am, uh, I belong to such and such nation, therefore I have got my duty to do this, do that for the nation, or to the society, or to the family, or to my personal self, or to my wife, my children. This is according to Vedic concepts and I. This is uh, illusion. Aham mameti janasam mohoyam. Moho means illusion. Uh, I am creating illusory circumstances and becoming entangled. This is my position. Uh, but my real uh, objective is how to get out this illusion and come to my original consciousness, Krishna consciousness, and then I get back. Krishna consciousness means spiritual body. As soon as I act on the basis of my spiritual body, that is called liberation. Uh, that is wanted. Uh, then I live blissfully in eternal life of knowledge. That is my problem. But people have been educated on this bodily concept of life and they are creating problems, and in order to solve the problems, they are becoming entangled in sinful activities. Uh, and just like this morning we were discussing about uh, killing the baby's body within the womb, abortion, uh, because we do not know that the soul within the body of the baby that cannot be killed. That cannot be killed. But that is also explained to one who knows the eternity of the soul. He does not kill anyone, neither the soul is killed. But we are creating problems because the soul has taken shelter in this body and the so-called medical science advising to destroy that body, that means he is becoming entangled. The person who is advising uh, understand that uh, when gentleman comes here, his wife is a medical doctor, and her business is to check the pregnant woman and advise whether the child should be killed or not. This is the business. Uh, so the um, situation of the world, due to ignorance of the soul, yeah. they are creating so many sinful activities and becoming entangled. Uh, but they have no knowledge how they are becoming entangled. This is Maya's prakhyavadmika uh, shakti, avarnatmika, although he is being entangled, but he is thinking that he is advancing advancing in scientific knowledge. This is their knowledge. The gentleman was talking that he is a mining engineer. The mining engineer, his business is to make the atmosphere within the mine very comfortable. Just imagine, he has gone down the, within the earth, 
just like the uh, mouse hole, uh, and he is improving it. Mouse hole. After being educated, after getting degrees, his position is to enter into the dark, dark, I mean, say, hole of the earth, and he is trying to uh, scientific <coughs> advancement by cleansing, cleansing the uh, air within the mind. He is condemned that he has been forced to give up the outer outer space free air. He has been condemned to go into the uh, within the earth, and he is proud of scientific advancement. This is this is scientific advancement. So monote anartham, that is bhaste bhaste before writing. Some of the Mahavatam, by the uh, under the instruction of Narada, he meditated. Uh, what is the position? The Bhakti Yoga Manasi, Sammak Pranihite Amale, Apasat Purusam, Purna, Mayantata Dapasitam. He saw, realized there are two things uh, the Maya and Krishna. Mayanta the apasita, taking shelter of Krishna. This Maya cannot stand without Krishna. But Krishna is not affected by Maya because Krishna is not affected at all. But the living entities, jaya sarmahita jiva, the living entities, they become affected by the presence of Maya. Uh, Krishna is not affected. Uh, just like uh, the sun and the sunshine. Sunshine means combination of uh, illu- illuminating particles. That is sunshine. It is scientific. Uh, uh, sparks, little atomic sparks, shining sparks. So similarly, we are also just like uh, the shining sparks of Krishna. Krishna is compared with the sun. Krishna surja sama maya andhaka. Uh, now when there is cloud maya, the sun is not affected uh, by the small particles, sun sign. Uh, they are affected. Just like uh, this type Here is sun and below uh, many millions of miles below the cloud, and the cloud is covering part of the sun sign, which is combination of illuminating particles. Uh, so the maya or the cloud cannot cover the sun, but it can cover <coughs> the minute shining particles. So we are affected. Krishna is not affected. Therefore, Vasudev saw apasat purusam purnam. He saw, just like in aeroplane, he go above the cloud. The sun is not affected at all by the cloud. Although below the aeroplane you will see vast mass of cloud. Similarly, Maya cannot affect Krishna. Therefore, Bhagavad Gita says, the Yudhisa Gunamai Momo Maya. Mama Maya Krishna says, my illusory energy. Krishna is never uh, affected by the illusory energy. Exactly like the cloud. But the Mahavadi philosopher, they say that when uh, impersonal, absolute truth comes, uh, appears, they also accept the incarnation. But their philosophy is, the ultimately, the absolute truth is impersonal. When he appears as a person, he accepts the Maya body. This is Maya. Uh, uh, Krishna uh, may be accepted as the Supreme God, but uh, <coughs> he has accepted a material body. That means they want to compare Krishna with ordinary uh, living entity. And that is condemned in the Bhagavad Gita. It is said that Avajananti Mahamura Mahasintanu Asita. 
because Krishna comes in the original form, <coughs> original form is two handed. It is also accepted in the Bible. Man is made after the image of God. <coughs> God has got two hands. In the four-handed Vishnu form is not the original form. Uh, Vishnu form is second uh, manifestation of Sankarsa. So Krishna is never affected by Maya. This is point. 